Hi, Red Hat developers. This is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program back at Summit 2017 here in the Dev Zone with Jorge Morales with Red Hat, who's going to show us how to enhance our builds in OpenShift by chaining. And I'm going to talk to you about chaining builds in OpenShift. So there is, usually in OpenShift, there is three ways to get your application into OpenShift. It's louder? Yeah. So there is three ways of getting your applications into OpenShift. Usually, you can deploy your application source code using source to image. OpenShift will build your application source code and will layer that on top of an open of a Docker image. Then the other option that we have is usually, if you want to build that application out of OpenShift, you just build it with Maven and you maybe push that artifact into an Nexus repository artifact or artifact, whatever. So you can just stream that artifact down into a Docker image and then build that image into op in OpenShift. And then the, th the third option that we have to build or get applications into OpenShift is just by deploying your complete uh, image, Docker image that you have built somewhere else. Okay, so this is, this is the process of source to image. In source to image, what we do is just, we got a source repository, usually a Git repository, then you stream your source code, you pull down the source code into a Docker builder, and that image will build your application source code using Maven with our supported images, and then it will layer that on top of a Docker, uh, of a Docker container. The, that container will be pushed into an application registry and will be uh, ready to deploy. But there is always a but. So what if we want to deploy uh, or use a vanilla Docker image? So right now the process that I've shown is just to use source to image enabled image. So they, they has to be ready to be used in OpenShift. You may not want to use those images because the, you may have an application server that is provided by a third party or an ISP. So you may want to use those. Or uh, maybe you want to use a different, different building technology. So our source to images, they are using Maven to build your artifacts. You maybe want to use Gradle if you are talking about Java. So you may want to use a different build technology. Then the third option we have is just to have the smallest possible image. We usually, when we talk about our source to images, because they are building and running the, your applications, they have a lot of dependencies in it. You may want to have a small image to run in production. So you, you may want to create the smallest possible image to be able to run it in production. So, but we still want to use source to image. So the answer is chaining builds. So chaining builds is a process where we have still, we get your source code from Git and we build your application artifact using an image that is just created to build. Not to run your application, but just to build. So you can have a different set of images like Maven, Gradle, whatever languages, Go, whatever language you want to build, but the, the sole purpose of that image is just to build your artifact. Then that artifact, the binary artifact that you have, will be streamed into a second builder image. That what it will do is just put that artifact in a specific location in your runtime image. It will use not source to image, the second build, it will use Docker, Docker strategy, Docker build. So it will, it will use the Docker build, it will get your, your artifact, it will put it in a, in a location, and then it will create an image that will be pushed into a registry and it will be used then to run your application. So this first image will be a builder image, the second image will be a runtime image. And this can be specialized images that you can create and you can combine in a multiple, in a, in a more flexible way. So there is some examples that I'm going to show you today. And then, as an example to run your vanilla image as runtime, we may not want to make a, an S2A enabled image, or maybe we can use an image from anywhere. We want to use as run, for running our application an image that somebody has provided to, you, to us, an ISB or maybe Docker has, or we want to have a smaller frame to it. So as an example, we have a Maven builder that we will use with the, our stock non S2I wildfly image. So in this example, what we do is create the first build. And we are going to be using, because we, this image is built with Maven, we will leverage the Maven capabilities that are on the wildfly image. So we just use a regular wildfly build, but we will not use that image too as runtime. We give that a name as a name of builder, and we just build it. Once we have that, 
and we know that the build process has, will be put in the artifact in a specific location, what we will do is second build that will get the artifact from that specific location and it will just put it as a new layer on top of an existing image. In this case, we're going to use the, ofi the official project JBoss Wildfly, which is a, a non-S2I type of image. Another a different example is using Gradle to build your, to build your application. So if you, if you just don't want to leverage whatever we provide, because you have already a lot of expertise and a big investment in building things with Gradle, then this is a different way of doing. So with this, you can achieve a bigger combination or possibilities of uh, image creation. And the same way as we did before, I'm going to use a, an image that has Gradle capabilities. So this, this example is building, is building with Gradle. It's using one of my own images that is not supported, of course. And it will just build uh, an, a Gradle application. Once I have the application and I know where the image is put in that artifact, I will stream that into a second build and I will just, just layer the application on top of an existing image, in this case, the official JDK image, which has building capabilities, but the building capability that has is using Maven, not Gradle. And then the third, the third example that I'm, that I'm gonna show you is just getting the smallest possible um, uh, final image. With Go, you can create a binary that is just has all the uh, dependencies statically linked, so with this, what we are doing is just build using a source to image, a Go source to image enable. So we, we use Go to build the application, but then that application will just stream it into on top of a scratch based image, which will reduce the footprint of the image from 200 or 300 megs to only eight, which is really awesome. I'm going to show you some examples of this in action. So here, as you can see, what you will see is that we have two different builds. One is the builder and the other one is the runtime. The builder is the, the one that will pull down my code and will build the application. We'll put it in a specific location and then I will create a second uh, build that will get that artifact and will stream it on top of, of an existing uh, scratch image. The good thing is that we can leverage still, we can, we can also leverage the capabilities of OpenShift in the sense of once my application is being created, my first, my first application is being created, this application, this build application, this build will be pushed into a registry. We see that it's being pushed into a registry. Once we see that it's pushed into a registry, we will see that we, we get a second build here that just happened, should happen right now. That is the second build because there is a trigger that knows whenever I have built the first image, it will notify the second build and it will automatically build. So I just need to care the same way as with regular S2I to update my code. I can have a, 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 web, a, a, a GitHub trigger to just trigger the first build. The second build will be triggered once the first build has finished. And in this way, I can reduce the footprint. I can use different builders. I can use different images to runtime. So I can have a bigger combination of possibilities and capabilities in OpenShift. Can Questions? Not being build config because it's, it's build config defines, uh, defines one single build. But you, what you can do is once you have prototype this type of builds, you know that you are going to be using build, uh, Go S2I builder and then uh, runtime on top of Scratch. What you can do is create a template that will simplify your life. So with, yes, that will have to build configs, but the configuration that you will expose to the, to the developers can be as minimal as just the, the, the source of where is your source, your source code, or can be as complete as with a regular template. So from a, from a developer's perspective, if you are using templates, you will see no difference that there is two builds happening below. Of course, it will take a little more time, and there is some other considerations to think about, but from a developer's perspective, it will be as easy as it used to be. Yeah. Yes, yes, but the thing is that if you don't build, 
if you execute the runtime process multiple times, there will be the same image always created. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can integrate this. This is usually integratable into, into Jenkins. So in, in continuous delivery, in pipelines, this is the same process you will do probably in, in, in Jenkins. But if you don't want to invest in Jenkins, you don't want to introduce Jenkins in your, in your build process, you can just leverage this. Yeah, of course. So whenever, like, like every other build, what you need to specify is that the, the, the image stream where you are pushing can be local or can be remote. So you, if you just use um, what is called pull, pull through and push through, you will specify that the, the image should go to a remote registry and the build will go to a different. But if you want to go to both, no, you cannot do that. Yeah, so there is, you, can, you can have one registry external to OpenShift, and you can just build and push to the external local registry, but you cannot push to two, two different registries at the same time. OK? You can, you can do it with any version, yeah. So you can do it. This is a process that can be done from OpenShift 3.0. No, well, probably not 3.0, but 3.02 for sure, and onwards. Because the only, the only requirement that you have is that it allows you to do what is called binary builds. So inject a binary into a, into a Docker image and while you do a Docker build. Thank you.